I've said things that just foot in the mouth, just stupid, stupid things. Are you also bleeping illegal alien and amnesty, other words we're not well, supposed to use? <laughs> well, one, one, one is a... Let me ask you this question. Who makes you weep more for journalism, Keith Oberman or me? That's quite a question. I guess it's because Muslims don't eat during the day during Ramadan. They fast during the day and eat at night. Sort of like cockroaches. For Democrats, it's another scalp to hang on the wall. But when you refer to an entire ethnicity as camel jockeys, <laughs> It sounds bigoted. Yes, and it's so mean after they killed 3,000 well, no, Americans. They, and I we have sure moved away from the day when we called them Krauts and Nips. Meanwhile, the massacres like this happen because younger Americans are unwilling to confront evil. Uh, and I think part of the problem is a general culture of passivity, which Virginia Tech exemplifies. And we're talking about Harlem. And by and large, I lived in New York for eight years. White people don't go to Harlem. If, if Dan Abrams and John DePietro, Bill O'Reilly, some white guys sitting around a table, and Dan Abrams said, yeah, I was up in Harlem last night, we would think you were either A, looking for drugs, or B, looking for a prostitute. I don't understand why people take the NAACP seriously. It was a group whose history we can all respect, and I know I do respect yeah. its history, but at this point, uh, it's a sad joke that should be shut down, I think, immediately. It is a, it is a stretch, and I, I'm half joking. <laughs> We're all reacting here and putting on shit. We have nothing to... Welcome back to Harbaugh's. Yeah. How's that for an intro, yeah. Joe? That's pretty yeah. freaking awesome. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. So, well, I think that Hillary's wife, Bill, is going to be a, a detriment, unfortunately, to uh, Mrs. Clinton because it's going to be a situation where, since he's still dating, it's obviously uh, going to be a detraction, I think, from the race. So that's that's going to be problematic for Mrs. Clinton. Time now for the most ridiculous item of the day. The factor is lifting the boycott of France. The kid was leading him on. I mean, this kid was uh, was leading him on. You know what I'm saying? You read these things. Who is the kid? Maybe he's a Democrat. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know who it is. Is there a real kid? Uh, tolerance and diversity is the guidepost for public life. This is what you end up getting. You get congressmen chasing 16-year-old boys down the halls of Congress. You were afraid, I assume. Yeah. Did your kidnappers tell you they would hurt you or your family if you tried to get away? I, you know, they did. And... I really am here to support the bill and not to go into what, you know, what happened to me, what the whole, like, what is in my past, because I'm not here to give an interview on that. I'm here to help push this bill through. And I want you to push the bill through, and I want people to hear your voice. Uh, when we take a look back, there is a shot of Elizabeth Smart. And here she is four years later, and frankly, it's a miracle that she was ever found. You know, a lot of people have seen shots of you wearing a burqa. How did you see out of that thing? You know, I'm really not going to talk about this at, the, at this time. I mean, that's something I just don't even look back at. And I really, I really, to be frankly honest, I really don't appreciate you bringing all this up. I'm sorry, dear. I thought that you would speak out to other victims, but you know what? I completely understand. A lot of victims don't want to talk about it and don't feel like talking about it. Let's talk about the bill. This is the same old fight we see all the time with the irreligious trying to stir up trouble with the religious. Yes, godless liberals are upset that other people believe in God. The fact that this question even came up three years after the Iraq war really underscores the intensity perhaps of the suspicion and the debate whether or not this administration intentionally uh, blurred the lines between Iraq and September 11th to justify the invasion of Iraq three years ago. You know, I, I've heard this theory about, you know, everything was just fine until we arrived and, the, you know, kind of, the, the, you know, stir up the hornet's nest theory. It just, it just doesn't hold water as far as I'm concerned. The terrorists attacked us and killed 3,000 of our citizens before we started the freedom agenda in the Middle East. Uh, the fact is the president made it clear before the State of the Union in, in 2002 that there was no link between Saddam Hussein and September 11th. Forty percent of Americans believe that it was Iraq, Saddam Hussein, who attacked us on 9-11. Does that concern you that people are misinformed? No, but I think what, well, yes, but... Um, that would explain why we people do supported know. the war. 
Look, I, I don't think that's a particularly good question. But that's the Saddam, answer I'm asking if you're concerned right, about. Right, well, this is why it's not a good question, because we do know Saddam was working with al-Qaeda's top agents. Who are we fighting there now, Juan? Al-Qaeda in Iraq. They were there before we got there, and they're there now. We, are, we could never verify that there was any Iraqi authority, direction, and control, complicity with al-Qaeda for 9-11 or any operational act against America. So sometimes I just want to scream. You guys have been going on since this thing began. I mean, you don't give credit to people, Nancy Pelosi, Howard Dean, Barbara Lee, people who said from the start, this is a mistake. You put them down. Now it's everybody's a surrender monkey or impatient or squeamish. That this is like when the terrorists kind of came out, you know, before the Bush election and supported the Democrats. Every debate, David Brody, the Republicans have, they make the point, we understand Islamic fascism we understand the terrorist threat the democrats don't i mean i think it's somewhat of a on the republican side a, a testosterone convention in essence is what it is wolf long term the investment that we're making today will be a small price uh the majority leader of the senate is absolutely 100 percent wrong his statements give aid and comfort to our enemy and demoralize our troops to say the the war is lost is outrageous so the question i'd like to pose tonight is which one of the democrat contenders are going to take Harry Reid to task about giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Uh, because that advertisement in the New York Times today by NoobMoveOn.org, you know, you know, saying, is he General Petraeus or General Betray Us? Uh, you know, I think it struck many Republicans, and frankly, it will strike a lot of fair-minded Americans as sort of a below-the-belt kind of attack before we've even had a chance to hear. I, I must tell you, I, I, I have a personal relationship with him, so I, I'm sure I'm biased in this regard. Just hours after I left the prison at Gitmo last Friday, three detainees committed suicide. Yes, apparently this weekend, Bill O'Reilly took a visit to Guantanamo to see what all the fuss was about, even going so far as to talk with some of the inmates. The Guantanamo controversy is easy to define. The Bush administration sees the 460 detainees as prisoners of war. The liberal press and some human rights groups believe they are criminals entitled to due process. It's simple, you stupid f the Bush administration sees them as prisoners of war, and liberal commies see it otherwise. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Condoleezza Rice, you had something to say? These people uh, at Guantanamo are unlawful combatants, that is, they're not prisoners of war. Weapons of mass destruction, the claim that Iraq was sponsoring terrorists would have attacked us on 9-11, and that Iraq had purchased nuclear materials from Niger. Uh, all three of those turned out, turned out to be false. I was very careful never to say that Saddam Hussein ordered the attacks on America. How do you expect a generation of young people such as ourselves to afford college at a time like this when we're paying for a war in Iraq? My point to you is but economic growth enables us to do more than one thing. It's you talk about freedom, I, I see you assert your, your right to, to uh, tap my telephone, to to arrest me and hold me without uh, without charges to yeah to try to preclude me from from breathing clean air and drinking clean water and eating safe food if I were a woman you'd like to uh, restrict my opportunity to make a choice and I'm not your favorite guy go ahead <laughs> I have never felt more ashamed of nor more frightened by my leadership in Washington, including the presidency, by the Senate and Not a letter the House. Says. Despite your rhetoric that compassion and, and common sense have been left far behind in, during your administration, and, and I would hope from time to time that you have the humility and the grace to, to, to be ashamed of yourself, inside yourself. I just don't get it. If a, a strike, a military strike against Iran initially would be extraordinarily popular. You said that Americans backed you know, the invasion of Iraq because they thought Iraq was responsible for 9-11. So you're saying like, if the president lies to the American people again, then it would be popular. Now we have no longer any other options but to go in to Iran. Iran has long been the puppet master in the Middle East. You don't have to take my word for it. Just watch any episode of Law & Order.
And the, really, the reaction to the suicide should be boo freaking who.